Good morning, ladies. It's Nanny from Nanny and the Moose, back again for another me day, but this time it's for the cottage. In this video, you're going to see Nanny getting the cottage spruced up a little bit. We're gonna also talk about some, um, some thoughts that keep running through Nanny's mind. Um, not, not great thoughts, you know, the, the wakeless hours of the night sometimes go into those thoughts about the future and the progress of aging, which is inescapable, as we know, and some of the problems that confront you with um, caregiving and taking care of yourself. So as I kind of work around the house a little bit with my Dyson, and I can only find one part. That's how disorganized I am right now. I got to find the, the top part. I think I've had it charging somewhere, so I gotta get that out. Meanwhile, Moosey has been shipped outside. He decided he better get out of the way <laughs> because I have a lot of cleaning to do around the area of Moosey's world. You know, he gets into the popcorn and the cheese and crackers and things, and I gotta check it, but I can't move stuff because it's Moosey's world. <laughs> First thing that I happened to find down in Moosey's world is what we always called years ago with all the kids, unreported damage. <laughs> this is his coffee cup that I served him coffee in this morning. And I certainly didn't serve it like this, but I can't find the other part. So there's some explaining to do about what happened here. I hope it didn't happen when he was having his morning coffee. So think we'll investigate that a little later. Tomorrow, Moosey and I have visitors coming. We have Mikey and his family coming, and the two little girls, Megan and Lizzie, are going to stay with us for a couple of hours while they take Dane into an attraction at Universal Studios called Stranger Things. I guess these teeny boppers are interested in things like that and there's some kind of an attraction there. It's part of his birthday present. We are going to do, in fact, Megan has requested, remember she's the baker, that wonderful little baker, and I've shown you them before. And Megan wants to do some cooking. So I thought, why not turn it into a cooking show, The Three Musketeers, Lizzie, Megan, and Nanny. And then the next video, we're gonna get into the preparations for our tea party. So stick with us and you might enjoy some chit chat and um, some preparations that Nanny's making for my visit tomorrow with the girls. <laughs> Just to show you how disorganized I am right now, I can't find my glasses. I took them off when I was doing my eye makeup. And how do you find glasses when your glasses are not on your eyes? I have to have a special pair of my readers and I have tons of those around from the old days. So excuse me for a minute while I go hunt for some glasses to find my glasses. And it looks like it might be one of those mornings coming up here. Getting a little weird this morning. <sighs> I found my readers or a pair of about 15 that I have had over the years. And uh, when I cleaned them and looked in the mirror to see how they looked before I came back. Why didn't you tell me they were in here? <laughs> so is this what happens? With the aging process, oh well. The, the problem with my glasses, I think I told you last week, I um, they've uh, gotten scratched. The lenses are scratched, and look how far apart these are. They every time I bend over, they slip off my face, and so I'm always looking for them somewhere on the floor or in a pile of laundry or whatever. So this is a job I do have to get to next week. I probably am overdue in getting my eyes examined anyway. So I love my, my frames, but what I'm gonna try and do is have the doctor just replace when I get new lenses and if they're changed, I need new lenses anyway, whether they're different or the same. 
and I want them to put them in here and of course fix these these earpieces which just don't fit my broad face anymore. Okay, so now I'm in business again. <laughs> and we can be begin the, the the me time. Now the cottage isn't going to get the amount of time that I gave myself on my me day. I just don't have the energy to run around. Oh, I just found found the other part of the Dyson. So now I'm ready to go and I'm going to see how my my energy holds out here because I'm going to start with the floor all around Moosey's World and, uh, and then we'll talk. Maybe I can talk while I'm doing this. I don't know whether that'll work out or not. Mikey gave us this several years ago and I can't believe that I lived without this for so long. It's just wonderful. So, start with Moosey's World, which is that one. You know, it's a good thing you have company once in a while, isn't it? <laughs> you know, when I... Go around with the vacuum down this end, which is down by the TV. The whole, um, I would say one fourth, maybe a third of the living room is uh, something we called Moosey's World because it's it's where he has his comfortable chair. He has his nice big TV. He has all his books. He's a huge reader. He has his painting stuff. Now, you know, he hasn't done any of that painting in a while. He was on a big kick a, a year or so ago where he was doing... <laughs> where he was doing um, a lot of paint by numbers and he gave uh, some beautiful paintings, big ones, to all the kids that Christmas. I think it was, not this Christmas, last Christmas. He hasn't been doing that lately. He has to get back to it. He does a lot of reading and research and, and um, just happy as a lark down here. Now, there are some things in our lives that uh, we just don't do anymore. And it, it's sad. I find it sad and so does Moosey. And that is traveling. We did do just a ton of traveling. We we lived in Europe. We lived in, in Scotland. We traveled to several continents, had great times. We did a lot of, of cruising, long ones. We went through the Panama Canal. I think about those trips. We would love to do some more trips, cruises, but I think it's just too taxing for Moosey's mobility. I don't know how relaxing a cruise might be. We have great memories of traveling. So let, let's put that part out, out of our um, heads for now and talk about things that mentally and physically we can do to keep us going, coping uh, happily and, and safely and um, get through this aging process. You know? It's something that we're blessed with and we're looking forward to, but there's certain things you got to deal with. And a big part of it is that mental problems and those fears that you just have to put out of your mind and conquer. And, and I want to talk to you about some of the ways I try and do that. Taking a break here now from my vacuuming. I... I kind of like my readers for a while. Now, what I want to call this phase of of our little session here is um, evaluating the challenges of the aging process, especially over, let's say, 60, 65. And, and up to that point, um, maybe you think about getting old, but you're still, you're still mobile. You're still in good health. You still have things you're doing. You're probably still working and, and you've got, you you're busy. You've got tons of things going, but when you reach that, that retirement age or into your seventies and older, you, your life changes dramatically. M maybe a chronic pain has set in and that's probably one of the things most of you are dealing with that's just hard. But many studies have said 
that what happens to certain people, not, not everyone, as you retire, you, of course, COVID put a big wrench in, in how we lived. Probably things would be a lot different if we hadn't gone through that because we're all s s suffering from the effects of all of that, mentally, physically, socially, especially. Um, what What happens is you get to a point where your life becomes smaller. You tend to not get out as much. Maybe you cut down on your traveling, if you did any at all. A lot of the habits that you have that were social habits, you've um, let go of friends, maybe your family has moved away. And a lot of this also, a lot of your, what you can look forward to does depend on family and friends. Do you have family still nearby and around you or do you have any family at all? Also, what's your friend activity? Do you still see special people? They say that the main fears of, of people as they get older, the fears are loneliness and isolation. Somehow they're starting to feel invisible. And a lot of the studies use those words all the time. Now, I, I say there's three aspects to this, coping with old age. You have the mental aspects, these things that come into your head, the negative thoughts about growing old, who will take care of us if, if we become disabled, or if you're a caretaker, um, you're doing okay now taking care of your spouse or, or your partner or, or a child. However, you worry, what happens to me? What happens to us if something happens to me? That, those are some of the things that enter my mind because as you know, I am um, somewhat of a caretaker to Moosey. And this has been going on five or six years now. He had a terrible hip break, fell, and was in uh, a skilled nursing facility for five months. It just did not turn out well. And he came out of it all with basically no mobility, balance issues and all sorts of things went wrong. Um, and I'm not gonna go into it. Prior to that, he did have a stroke. He's, he's had septic shock. He's had a lot of problems that he's gotten through and his general health is, is good, it's, it's good. But he has these mobility issues that um, are not, um, they're not getting better. Uh, expectedly, you know, you're getting older and um, when you can't get around, you can't exercise, everything starts getting worse. And and I worry about that, um, especially within the house. Now Moosey's other hip is beginning to bother him. And um, he, he says he's not going to do anything about it. You know, sometimes people get things into their heads. He's not going to go through that again. He's going to deal with it. Well, how do you deal with it if it starts getting worse? Won't his situation get worse? These are the things that go around in my head. Also, and you know, I've got my chronic things. I really can't complain though, because I know I have to keep going and, and I do. I'm the guy around here that has to keep things going. And that's my big worry too. So we have the emotional problems um, I, I worry about who's going to take care of me. I'm taking care of somebody, you know, all those crazy things. Right now we're good. Everything's fine. But those darn old thoughts do go through your head. So we've got the mental problems of dealing with, um, uh, some of you have deep depression. Some of you j just, just get, um, I, I am fortunate that I can pull myself out of my downers. And um, you've, you've got to learn to do that. I'll talk about some ways that we can do this. But you've got to have some things to look forward to. Not just big things, but the little things that, that can help you get by. So you've got the mental, the physical, of course, and the emotional. Now, the physical is we've got to keep active, even if you just walk or move your body or do whatever you have to do. Stay on your feet. Uh, get out, <laughs> try and get out, wear your masks. I do still use the disinfectants. 
keep hearing about friends that have been um, coming down with COVID and it's not good. So all, all, all these things, you have to create a life. These are challenges, but only you are going to be able to pull yourself out of it. Okay, I'm going to give you some examples of uh, certain people and how they handle this process. Now, our friends are, most of them are probably in their 80s. We do have young friends. Of course, our children are all our friends. But let me tell you about one friend, Joan. Joan is a girl that I met freshman year in high school and immediately we became friends. Now, as you know, I have Willie and Gail. Now, these are all Jersey gals, by the way. And Willie and Gail, I went from kindergarten all through grammar school and high school. Willie went off, uh, th then we went to different colleges, but we still get in contact. And as a matter of fact, Willie, Gail, Joan, Grace, and myself, all five of us had a reunion in Texas. Oh gosh, I don't know. I lose track of time. Was it eight, nine, ten years ago? It was fabulous. We spent a week there in a rented house right on the water in that. I remember the name of the town in Texas. Joan is from Texas now. She's lived there. Well, let me tell you about Joan. Here's one example of how somebody handles life in the 80s. Joan lost her husband, I guess, uh, three, four years ago, and she took care of him for probably six, six and a half years before he died. He eventually went into dementia. And Joan was always a very organized, up person. Oh, so organized. Nothing extra around, um, places for everything. So opposite of me, but, but so much fun. Well, Joan, uh, over the years, and especially, um, before and right after her husband died, Joan had a stroke. She had two knee replacements and uh, I believe a back operation of some sort. Her, she had a, a very bad something happened to her back. Now Joan is very careful. She is fine. Joan has five groups, different groups of women organizations. She has two different bridge club groups that she plays in. And this is she does stuff like this every week. She has a church affiliation. She does assist with some of the maintenance at, at church. She has a prayer group going. They all get together and eat an, an evening meal, at least once a month, and a luncheon. All these different groups of women that she's friends with, every day she has something. She gets up, she has regular meals, she cleans her, her own house, but carefully. She has one of those big long picks and she is busy. Now her family, Joan has three or four children, I can't remember, but they don't live nearby. Joan um, has to travel. She travels, she gets on planes, she takes bus rides, five, 10 hour bus rides to visit her children. She has taken the kids down to Mexico. She just did that a little while ago. Joan keeps busy despite all these things that she has. She knows how to take care of herself and she's just gonna socialize and have fun until something happens. Now that's one person. Now I could never live that way. I That would drive me crazy being that busy. Uh, she does evidently have a scheduled nap. She gets in there, but I couldn't stand all that activity. And and I love women, <laughs> but over the years, my daughters and kids have, have been, We I did have some very special women friends, but I didn't do a lot of women stuff because we were always doing stuff with the kids and my hubby's my best friend and blah, blah, blah. So I, I didn't have the life that Joan has, nor do I want that right now. I am very happy, not, now I wish we could travel. I, I really do, but that's not in the cards. I miss that. But but with these children, our happiness, my happiness is looking forward to a little tea party, going out for a day of antiquing or having lunch with my daughters, one at a time, being invited to uh, sister's night. I've told you about how the three girls get together every once in a while. Mom gets an invite. And uh, I would say it's family stuff that keeps me happy at this point. I enjoy little things around. Oh, I see Moosey moving. He might be coming in. I better make sure Moosey's world is 
fully cleaned before it comes in. I gotta go. So my question is, are you a Joan? If, if you are, good for you. You've, you've conquered it. You've got it made. Now, if you're more like me and you have some family and, and some friends around to see, things to look forward to, that helps too. But you still, we all, all of us have these fears that wake us up at night or that come to us when we are awake at night. And, and we all have them because we're all in the same boat. We will eventually settle into a mode of living that makes you happy or at least keeps you comfortable and safe and free, a little bit free of worries. Now, if you have made plans with friends or family as to someone who is going to take care of you, are you going to stay in your home? Can you handle taking care of a, a spouse in your home if, if that's your situation? Can you handle the upkeep of the home or do you have someone to take care of it? That's probably the ideal. If you have someone to help you take care of your home and maybe a little help taking care of a, of a spouse in your own home, that's great. But there are options. There are independent living situations where there are medical facilities and help to take care of your house, all in these, these um, living, uh, I don't know what you might call it, they're um they're especially set up for seniors who don't want to stay or can't stay in their homes but yet need a little extra care with meals just kind of talk these things over with a family member or someone who's knowledgeable and when you know you think you know what your future would be in your old age then that eases those fears in your mind. Well, what I do when I wake up, and as you know, I have segmented sleep. I will not lie there and let me think and think and think. I listen to Moosey or he's wheezing or coughing or what, and that makes it worse. And and so I I get up, I will have something to eat. I get cozy back in bed. And I will either put the TV on low and get a show that will take my mind off something like this, or I get on YouTube and I look at all the different things that will uplift me rather than... I, I do a lot of podcasts too. I, I am very interested in people's discussions on... I love to hear all the different ways women handle aging. Uh, in a in a very natural way, the things they do, they love nature, they have to be outside, um, they do have friends. The big thing is to keep social contact, somebody, because whether you say that or not, now a lot of people love living alone and are very happy with that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the emotional contact with live people um, as opposed to virtual um, something like this, where we have our little family, our virtual family here, that helps many people, and I'm so glad that it does. And um, but but you do need something else, someone maybe to go out with lunch to lunch with once in a while, or to have in, and and have a little luncheon in your home, something like that. Now I'm not going to talk about the physical care because we all know what we should be eating what we should be drinking, what we should be doing for the maintenance of our body. We know all that to get the good sleep, to wear the sunscreen. We talk about that so much. I'm talking about our out-of-body um, living. Yeah, we know that it makes us feel better to put some makeup on, to take care of our skin, to do things like that, to wear some uh, pretty clothes and, and maybe just go out and take a walk in them. All that helps. It's a process. And as they say, and I've said it in one of our videos, aging ain't for sissies. Um, you have to create your comfortable mode of living 
And you know, we all know it's, you know, it's what life is. They all say, just do the right thing. We all know pretty much the right thing. You just have to be strong enough to, to beat those challenges that will come up and they're, they're going to be hard, but find, find your bliss. Even if it's outside gardening, light gardening, potting gardening, birds, feeding birds, nature walking, having a friend over once in a while, talking with kids on the phone, knitting, hobbies, painting. Keep yourself busy. Have something to look forward to and be able to find something that gets those those worries and those fears out of your head. We all have them. I have them. And I just, you know, there's not always a solution to our problems right now. Maybe those solutions come down the line. Maybe they'll never come. But you got to keep trying. Keep on trucking, ladies. I do have a couple of other things I want to talk about. Uplifting things. So I um, see Moosey's back in his chair out there. But <laughs> my Dyson has given out. The time is up. I've done my vacuuming. I'll do a little more in the morning. I'll have a couple of hours in the morning before our family arrives. So um, I'll, I'll get back to you in a minute. I did want to show you the progress of my amaryllis here. Remember, this is the one that's coming up. Isn't that something, Mosey? <laughs> yeah. And my pretty Valentine's mantle. <laughs> this isn't, this one's not real. It's just giving some support to the other one. Cute. So this is my little Valentine display up here. Hopefully we'll have a little bit more here and there. That's it. And I think I'm going to bring in that beautiful wreath on the door that Mosey gave me. And... Uh, put this up here. I think we'll get more enjoyment of it for the next month or so inside. Well, Moose just came in from outside. It's starting to get cold and Matthew is on his way up. He just came from Home Depot and De Depot. He just came from Home Depot and has gotten two of those metal shelves that he was going to get. Here's my mechanical team here. Matthew and Cindy. Okay. They say Cindy is the uh, mastermind behind all this. Is oh, that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're giving the orders here, Cindy, right? <laughs> now, this is set up so that I'll be able to put two tubs on each shelf. And I think we have four shelves. We bought two of these. So that's 16 tubs I'll be able to have good access to. And where'd you get them, Matt? Home Depot, and they're the Husky brand, 179 bucks, four feet wide, two feet deep, 75 inches high. Terrific. So we'll be able to get eight tubs easily for you to have access to and get some labels on these. So we're building two of them, so you're gonna have 16 tubs. Whoa-hoo. Nice, easy access. This is gonna be great. And I won't have to be calling you all the time to come up here. <laughs> you better call me for something else. I will. <laughs> the other side. Huh? This one on the other side. What is it, upside down there? No, it just needs to... Just I think it would be better fight if it's each other. Yeah. Needs directions. You don't read the directions? He doesn't. Oh, I do. Okay, good. Good job, girls and boys. Thank you once again. Yep. And the husky ones are built a lot better. Four shelves. Little tweaks here and there. Hold on, okay. On to number oh. two. <laughs> nice. This will go even more smoothly. Oh. And he also brought up another ham bone and some ham for another pea soup. This time I'll do it right and also some ham sandwiches and, and some meals. But I confronted Moosey with the unreported damages because when I was vacuuming down in Moosey's world, I couldn't find the rest of the cup. Well, he told me what happened, that he dropped it. And I did look way on the other side of the chair 
It's very difficult to get to some of those places. And I found at least two pieces. Part of my Port Marion, but do you know we bought this in the early 80s in London? This Port Marion, this Welsh China, just lasts forever. But I have many more of these, so it's okay. Now, so I told you that we're looking forward to the tea party with Molly's two little girls. And Moosey and I are getting our outfits together. I've picked out a hat with some big roses on it. I will be wearing a hat and something nice. Moosey, we're even trying to dig up his um, um, tuxedo jacket. In the meantime, I found this. And it's a little um, child's uh, cupcake stand that you put these things together. And I want to see if it's solid. It's just a little one. But since we're going to have tea sandwiches and things, um, I thought this would go with the tea set. I also got something, and I'm not going to open them for you, for the two girls. I love these glasses, by the way. I ordered two little wreaths for the two girls. And I'm not going to show you these until we get to the tea party. So I'm preparing. And now all we have to do is set the date. And when I figure out what I might wear, maybe I'll show you that in the next video. So what we're preparing for now, and in um, another hour or so, I finish the vacuuming. I am going to go to the store after Matthew leaves and we get this straightened out with these uh, shelves for storage. And I'm going to pick up some, uh, the girls want to do baking. As I told you, we're going to do a baking show, which will be the next video because they're coming tomorrow. And I'll probably put that up Monday or Tuesday. So I think we want to make some Valentine cookies. Megan might be bringing up her collection of um, pie birds. You know, she did the day of the dumpster dive, uh, the purge. Everybody got something. They were picking their treasures. And they, Megan was interested in these little, um, little birds, different ones. Some that I have painted myself, some that I bought that are vintage. And they're pie birds that you use when you bake pie. The, you put them in the middle of the pie. Very, very old English tradition that goes back to the nursery rhyme, Old King Cole. And the steam lets the steam out from the middle of the pie, up through the pie bird, out the mouth, and he's supposed to sing. However, in my years of using pie birds, I've yet to hear a birdie actually sing. Well, I think that's it. And I hope that you take to heart some of the a more serious part of the conversation of the video where we're just coping with the aging process and trying to live our best life, whether it's uh, with lots of social traveling and you're able to do that, or whether it's just finding something to look forward to of finding a friend if you don't have family nearby that you can maybe spend a couple of hours with every once in a while. A hobby, taking care of your emotions, your mental and your physical self, and things will be okay. The fears are natural. We all have them. And we'll find ways to get them in the back of our heads. So until our next video, Thank you all for your subscribing. New people, welcome. And I hope you'll enjoy being here with us. We we do have some fun now and then. And sometimes things get a little hysterical too. I love you all. And so does Moosey, by the way. God bless us all. I'll see you soon.